Welcome back. Now, Nigeria is dealing with a situation that is more like the PNID issue. So, the controversy over the contract signed by the Ogun State Government and Chinese firm Zhongshan Fu Sheng Industrial Investment Limited, leading to the seizure of three Nigerian aircraft in France and other assets in some other countries, is far from over. The company, which had earlier secured a court judgment in France to seize two Nigerian presidential planes, is also working to confiscate two properties in Liverpool, that's the United Kingdom now, belonging to the Nigerian government. That's not all. The company is making moves to seize the $20 million judgment cost awarded in favor of Nigeria against PNID by a United Kingdom appeal court in July. Now, these seizures are part of Zong, the Zongshan's attempt now to retrieve its uh, $70 million dollar million dollars now in an arbitration award against Nigeria. The case actually stems from a 2013 contract signed by Zongfu, a subsidiary of Zongshan Funcheng of, uh, and, and of course the Ogun state government to develop a free trade zone with Zongfu claiming 60% of the joint venture. However, in 2016, Zongfu alleged that the Ogun State government backed out of the agreement and wanted to overturn their investment in the free trade zone. One of the reasons given by the Ogun State government for revoking the joint venture agreement was based on information that the Chinese company and its parent company have been liquidated and wound up without successor companies, and so it lacked capacity to execute the free, zone, uh, the free trade zone project. Well, while Nigeria's Minister of Justice and Attorney General of the Federation, Latif Fagbemi, has accused the Chinese firm of uh, resorting to untwisting tactics in order to seize Nigerian assets in foreign jurisdictions. And just recently, Nigeria's Minister of Foreign Affairs also waded into the matter. This is what he had to say. This is part of the problem when uh, Subnational actors like state governments take it upon themselves to um, go into agreements, uh, go into international arrangements without recourse to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, without recourse to the federal government. And then when it goes awry, we are left with the, um, with the problem uh, to deal with. And that is why it's always important that such arrangements should be registered with the mission there, with the embassy, with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and uh, with the federal government. This is something that Ogun State under a different administration, not this governor, entered into uh, that we're not aware of. All we know is that, you know, um, they're going after Nigerian uh, assets. That's why really uh, foreign or international negotiations is not the purview of subnational actors you should always have those that are um, experienced in such an area that have the necessary skills and the necessary uh, training uh, to negotiate these sort of agreements. Well, joining me now to discuss this further is Adewale Ajadi, who is a lawyer and a public affairs analyst. Mr. Ajadi, thank you very much for coming on the program. Listening to the foreign affairs minister there, um, you know, giving the impression that the Nigerian government was not aware at the time when the Ogun State government signed that joint venture agreement with the Chinese firm. I mean, what, what do you make of that? Well, I wouldn't be surprised if that's the fact. Um, there is a spectacular failure of accountability um, in how we interact with the state government. And that failure of accountability um, not, not just in terms of this particular contract, but also possibly be with regards to Nigerian contractors between one administration and another. The, 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 but let's stick to this particular issue. Mm. It is clear that we need to tighten up on the obligations that are entered into by state governments. It is very clear that we have to make sure that there's greater transparency about all of these things um, because of the consequences of the different arbitration. And I wonder why the choice of arbitration is so rich large in our contract. And we put ourselves in very vulnerable position. And let me skip all of these things to say directly 
that I think the most important thing is to have an office of risk management, a federal mm -hmm. office of risk management that has copies of all of these things. So everything that puts um, states and puts the, the federal government in commitment internationally um, are, are, are copied into this risk office. And this risk office keeps um, um, checks and balances in place and possibly makes provisions for these situations that would happen inevitably. They would happen. And then we also need to know um, all our assets internationally. Because if these people are going to put us at very vulnerable positions, we have to manage our risks effectively. And, but, but then it's, it's quite shocking that, you know, um, a sovereignty as Nigeria would be used like, you know, like a guarantor in, in an agreement or, or a contract. And then that guarantor would not be aware. And now it is having to pay the price for uh, the mistake uh, done by a state government. I'm not sure that's entirely the fact. I'm fairly sure there are parts of the federal government that's aware of it. But you know how this thing works. Some official would approve this thing, uh, or maybe it even goes to the, to the federal, federal House of Assembly that may have a record of all these kinds of commitment. We're not very detail conscious about these things. And we don't, between governments, when one government moves to another, the records are not kept. You know, if the records are kept, they are kept in, in paper forms. Um, or the files are not maintained. There's so many things about our data management, about our risk awareness, about our risk management that are critical. And, 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 and we're not doing the best that we can do in these circumstances. Yet we are making not just the government vulnerable, but they are making assets of the people of Nigeria vulnerable as a result of not being at our best in managing this thing. You have heard me say many times that the state governments are completely out of control in general. And when, when one government, one, one state administration moves to another, it is, it is all better off. So, you know, these are not things that we should be alarmed by because this is what we do. And, and then isn't this also a clear, just as you have pointed out, that a clear demonstration of... Um, the bad blood that often exists now, uh, you know, uh, between administrations, say one administration, for instance, look, you, you look at this contract in question um, was actually executed, as we understand, by uh, a, a particular government. I mean, this was uh, we understand was executed under the government of uh, Benga Daniel. And when he left office, the man who took over from him, um, uh, Ibukunle Amosun, of course, no love lost between both men. Uh, you, you know that for sure. And then he, he came and uh, basically cancels this contract and, and cancelled a lot. I mean, listening to even Professor Patu Tommy, where he shared his experience as well. He also suffered uh, a similar fate. But, you know, you, you look at this. The, the question you ask is, uh, can there be a law, for instance, that ties um, the actions of you know, one government and binds it to the action of the government that takes over from it so that that government that takes over from it does, ju does not just come in and start, you know, revoking contracts and commitments that have been made by the previous government. All of these things are in place, but does it matter? The real politics of it, I'm saying as someone has experienced, uh, that has experienced this as a contractor too in the past, the reality is, the real politics of it is that nobody cares. The, 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 the essential commitment is to maximize the returns for themselves. And so the contract that's gone before, it's, it's not acceptable because all the fat has gone. So what's the point in maintaining that contract? And, and our people are very brutal at this. So the, the reality is that there has to be an extra level of checks and balances put in place to ensure that these behaviors has to stop because the consequences on the people and the, tre tre the, the um, funds of the people is immense. And until these things start to happen, like it's happening with the Chinese and it's happened in the past and will happen in the future, we won't stop this mess. It's a mess that of our own making because the, the houses of assembly that should oversee mm -hmm these things that make sure that governors are not 
emperors don't do it. That, that's the quite true. The judiciary is, is, uh, is reduced in its power to hold them to account considerably because they pay the judiciary. And as a consequence, you know, this, this, this is what happens. But it's, 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 it's not just on the um, um, state government level. It's also on the federal level. And if you remember, the last government tried to be the, I would argue, the first government that saw unfinished projects from prior commitments and try to finish that. Mm. And even that was a political loss for them because everybody was saying it's the former government that did what, because that's the other political side of it. That if you maintain what the other government has done, the people will not recognize that you have done anything and say it's the part government that did it. So it's not political expedient to execute a project that was started by your predecessor. So all of these things makes it impossible or even extremely difficult for us to maintain continuity, continuity of governance and government and accountability by government and governance in this, in the, in, in, in this uh, dispensation. But we have to find new solutions that make sure that there's an office of risk that is independent of who is in administration that maintains oversight over these things and reports to the House of Assembly and reports to the executive and we bring um, um, case files to the judiciary if it's needed. But I think there's another thing we have to be mindful of. This ease at which we sign ourselves up to arbitration, I think it creates a special kind of vulnerability. The, the, the idea of signing up to arbitration is to make sure that the process of agreement hmm. and solution is not litigious. But we are seeing that it doesn't stop the litigation. It continues it in different guises, and it makes us more vulnerable in the end. And, and it's quite a shame that in signing some of these agreements, we, we do not, you know, w when we sign this thing, we, we, we do not insist on um, the, the litigation, you know, being done here in Nigeria, you know, that Nigeria should, should just assume uh, the jurisdiction for such litiga litigations. I mean, that's the reason why we've seen some of this. But you, you look at this case now. Uh, we, we, we've lost uh, two, well, I, I wouldn't say we've lost because, you know, the, the process has not been uh, completed. Uh, Nigeria has said it's, it's still going to appeal. So the litigation is still on. But at the moment, um, well, two aircrafts are gone. Not, maybe not completely. Uh, the, Ch the Chinese firm was even gracious enough to allow uh, the president to use one of the aircrafts, <laughs> which, which uh, it's, it's a shame, actually. Uh, we understand the property at Liverpool is being put up for sale on eBay. Uh, and just recently, we're hearing uh, that uh, there's an aircraft in, in Canada that has also been confiscated. And, uh, you know, how, how, how do you think all of this can be resolved? How, how, how does Nigeria get out of this? and recover no, all of these assets? I don't, I'm not sure that resolution quickly stops us from finding solutions that we ought to find. You know, um, amongst my people, they say, the, the death that is killing your king's man is telling you a proverb. <laughs> There's a proverb in all of this, a proverb that we need to, to, to eat. And that is, we have to be better as a nation at organizing ourselves, at being detail conscious, at managing our exposure, managing our risks. And you know, this, the, the fact that we're always looking for someone to blame, you know, we're always looking for someone to blame. Oh, it's the Chinese firm. The Chinese firm is looking for its own interest. Hmm. Why, why would the Chinese firm be, you, they, they lost the contract that they, 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 they were committed to and were doing to the best of their ability. And now you are now saying that they're trying to get anything. Of course, they're trying to get something out of it. Is there any contractor that wouldn't try to get something out of something where they've shown commitment and they've expended money? So the, the, we, we have to stop you know, playing to the gallery and, and hooking the blame on lawyers who are involved in the process, this person, that person. The PRND that's constantly being raised was the, 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 the hook that was used to 
save Nigeria as an escape clause was 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 actually scapegoating one of our own lawyers. Hmm. It's, it's, that's it's... that's the only reason. While that was vacated, we 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 we, we turned it around and, and blamed our own people and threw our own people to the dogs. It's 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 really unfortunate. Really unfortunate. Mr. Jadi, thank you very much for coming on the show. Thanks a lot for your time as always. We appreciate it. All right, that's how much we can take on the program this week. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you again next time. Bye-bye.